What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. This particular car has always been one of my favorite cars. Uh, I just have been driving in courts for so long that I don't care to go down to a Civic, but the car as a whole, and if I want to get a hashback, a stick shift, I would definitely opt for this one or maybe a, a VW GTI or something like that. They're small, they're tiny, they're good looking, they do the job and they give you the fun on the weekends if you live, especially in a hotter climate the entire time where you can drive this throughout the year on your weekends, this one would be a really good solid buy. I will walk around this car. This one, like I said, is one of the Civics offered in four different types of Civics. When I say types, that is talking about Civic Sedans, then Civic Hatch, then Civic SI, and then Civic Type R. In the hatchback Civics, you do have an option to go with a manual gearbox. This one is the sport trim level, six speed manual transmission, 1.5 liter four cylinder engine, which is paired with a CVT gearbox, and that is six speed manual. We're looking at the rally red color. This is stock model. This one will give you blacked out wheels. It'll give you the black inserts on the mirrors as we come around and look at the front. Very solid. Like, I don't think anybody doesn't like Civics, especially the current generation we're in. Beautiful car in terms of what it offers you. If we're looking at from nose down, you've got the nice nose that kind of tapers into the grill. Very similar to how almost every manufacturer is doing, namely Lexus, that is very prominent because the nose is so big and then it kind of goes into it. But here it is, functional vents everywhere that you kind of need. You know, it's not active shutter with the grill, but it's open enough for the nice air intake. Full LED headlights, you do have fog lights here as well, but your integrated turn signals will switch to your DRLs. Overall, nothing glossier, just matte, and then your body color. Very solid front. I truly, truly love how this one looks. From, from this very angle, you can't tell if it's a hatchback or if it's a sedan, but it overall is a very nice car with the size of it. And of course, the price is just so good for this one, especially if you're looking for a stick shift, a reliable stick shift, that is. This is a side profile. Obviously, nothing crazy when it comes to the lines or creases, just one solid crease going. Very sharp line here if we look at look at this in general, what runs through the body. I truly do love how sharp it is. You've got your typical uh, black mirrors here, no integrated turn signals, no uh, blind spot monitor on this one. You can get the hatchback Civic and four trim levels, LX, then you have the Sport, then you have the EXL, and then you have the Touring. So here is that side profile as we wrap around the back. We can kind of see here are the 18 inch wheels. They are wrapped in a Goodyear tire and the profile of this would be uh, 235 40 R18. I do like how they look. It is black from factory. As we wrap around the back, of course, this is a hatchback. So you do get that little wiper over there and then you have, you know, your this, this little thing is your washer fluid spitter thing. And then it would, I do like how by the time it gets here, it won't really dirty the trunk. It will just probably be, you know, up at the, at the rear shield there. Down below in the rear, you have incandescent as far as the turn signals go. And then you have the LED that is off to the side there. Overall, it's a nice solid back when we talk about how the Civic appears to be. And then coming down here, down below, no ex exposed exhaust. You have the mat there in the fake diffuser and everything else is fairly decent in terms of how it looks. You've got your sport badging. If you black out all of this, the car will look pretty solid because there is really no other chrome outside of the Honda emblem there. Your window sills are of course black too. As we dive into the trunk, this is a hatchback. So it's going to give you a lot of space there. I have folded the seats. It's, it's not one touch up. It's just a typical trunk. You gotta lift it up a little bit. Down here, you get your, since this is not a hybrid, you get your full spare there with the tools there. Decent size trunk here. You can put a carry-ons upright. You could also have enough space if you do a 60-40 split. You could put a bike without taking out the wheels for it. You also have the load cover here, which extends out from here and then just basically, you know, covers anything that you want to put there that needs coverage. Otherwise, just take it away and let go. Quality, interior quality, build quality of things, obviously, for the prices comes in, and I'll show you and I'll talk about the pricing at the very end of this, but it's, I think it's a solid buy. Then you have 
two grab handles. They think that people would need two. You don't really need two. And then you have, you know, one on the inside too. So they've given the abundance of how you can shut this trunk. So I'll choose this one and we'll shut this as we wrap around here and we'll go back inside from the front. Looking at the side, very clean. I do really, really like the design of this. You would probably be comparing this with, let's say if you're going with Corolla GR, of course it's more expensive than this one, but in the line of, in, in, the, in the type of stick shifts that you get, you would have some of those options in VW, GTI, and what have you. It still gives you keyless entry, of course, on the front. As we jump in the front, door panel, very similar to how, let's say, any other Civic would look like, or even the Accord. One of my favorite things in the Civic, which I wish they did in the Accord and even Pilot or CRVs, is the way the door handle feels. This just feels so good. Like, I love the shape of this. It wraps around. Just one thing, just one little thing. Some, some, sometimes these things make you the happiest in life. So there's that. You got enough space in the door sill there. No premium sound, but the sound quality is fine on this one. It's a six speaker auto, um, audio system. No leatherette padding. This is soft to touch, but it's not, it's kind of coarse here. You've got plastic, plastic, cloth, plastic. So of course, when you know the price of this, you'd be like, that's fine, it's acceptable. As we jump inside, the seats would be pretty manual here. It's cloth interior. It's a solid looking interior for the price we get as we jump inside. This is the stick shift. So to turn it on, I'm gonna put my foot on the clutch and I'm gonna put my foot on the brake. It is still a push button start, so we get to turn the car up. Gauge cluster for Civics are analog and digital. So your left side of the screen would be all digital. You can configure it with the rotator on the steering wheel. Not too configurable in terms of what it offers you, but it's there. It's fine. Your right side is where speedometer sits. You have that analog. You also have the speed up there as well when it comes to digital. Otherwise, it's a very minimal looking screen your fuel stuff is down here and the uh, temperature of the car is also being shown we'll go from left to right so you've got your dimmer for the speedometer you also have the honda sensing and the traction control right from here you can see the paddles are really nice and the way they feel and they look i do like this the steering wheel is from the same family of all Hondas right now, you've seen this in Accords, you've seen this in Pilots, you've also seen this in the CRVs. No change there. Of course, this is a manual transmission, so you do not get any paddle shifters or anything like that. This is also not a hybrid, so you won't have the degenerative either. Typical wiper stock and your indicator stocks. Otherwise, the adjustments on the steering wheel is tilt, not telescopic. So there's that. You, looking at the center console here, it's a mixture of soft, piano and then some mat where you would be touching no heated seats no ventilated seats but overall it feels nice if it, is, it feels good i i do like how this is again you have the honeycomb with the cylinder things here this is a seven inch display so if we go turn it on let's get just to the menu you could see it graphics eh it's so it's okay i mean nothing nothing out of ordinary here you have the let's just go back you have the backup camera in here too. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto both would be wired. Uh, you don't get wireless until you get into the 9 in screen in the hatchback for touring. But I'm going to show you guys how the backup camera looks. So it's fine. It's got trajectories there. So it will move accordingly. No parking sensors, nothing like that. It is a fine system there. Otherwise, Overall, the interior quality is fairly decent for the price it's at. Down below, you've got one USB-A, which is going to be for your CarPlay. You have the 12-volt socket, no wireless charging pad here. And then your six-speed manual transmission paired with a CVT here, producing at around 158 horsepower. Again, not crazy power, but this one's just giving you the fun of driving a stick shift at a very low cost, if you will. You have the Econ button there. You have the engine start on, off button here your parking brake and your brake hold no driving modes here to choose from no driving modes in general just like i said this is just giving you the fun of driving the uh stick shift with the reliable brand it comes under which is honda and then the fact that the price is not crazy high even if someone wanted to buy a brand new stick shift honda civic cup holders decent size they are tall so you can put tall things in here but then it would obviously 
hinder with you shifting gears. So this is not the most ideal position, I feel like. I think this could have been where the the way they would have designed if they were to take this and move it somewhere over here, move this a little off to the side, it would be a little more practical, especially for stick shift people. But overall, you don't really want your hydro flasks and things like that to be, they are deep enough. So if you put something like a Starbucks drink or something, it would go in so you won't really have a blocker when you're uh, switching gears. But I feel like the position could be better a little moved around or in fact, have them be here somewhere so your gearbox is always open, especially for a stick shift. You get a nice, decent size. Uh, Depth-wise is the console here, not so wide in terms of what you could put. This is not leather padded, this is cloth padded, same material as your seats. Seats are not super comfortable, but they're not also super, you know, uncomfortable. When I say super comfortable, that simply means that with the price point, they're decent seats. They do have these decent bolsters in it. So depending on your size and depending on your driving style, you still would be okay with this sport. Here does not give you the sunroof, just a typical headliner there. You also don't have your sunglass holder. You just have your map lights here and then your uh, glove box is going to be over there. A decent size for the car. I'm not going to open it really. Overall speaking, the interior, we've seen this interior many times in different lineups of Hondas. It's solid for what it does. Yes, it's piano, so you will need to keep a microfiber rag so you can always just clean it up. This screen, I feel like, could be better for any trim level. I don't understand why Honda went this route to still give seven inches on any trim levels, really. But then I guess, you know, you wouldn't then up for a better trim level or then you wouldn't go into Acura's really if it, Honda gave everything for its own cars. Overall, it's a solid car for the price it's at in terms of reliability. And of course, this is my favorite part. I am having a lot of fun with it. And namely because my my I know how to drive six shift, partly also because when I first started driving, I had uh, stick shift cars. I'll show you the sticker price very soon, but first in the back. So back door, pretty decent. You've got one bottle holder there. You can slant it in. Otherwise, nothing crazy outside of just padding here. This is very hard, actually. If we look at the interior before jumping in, this is how the back looks like. It still gives you enough space. Five foot nine here, you have pretty solid space in the back. Also for passengers, can you haul four passengers on a long haul trip? I think you can. Just not five across here, at least not five adults. You don't have cup holders here. You do not have cup holders in here. You only have cup holders in the side. So this is where I would zonk that if we are talking about the design overall, if you can't give here because it's a 60-40, not a through loading, but then you also have, it's a hatch so you can, you know, grab things from here from overhead. But overall, it's, it's decent. You get this plastic thing here, which I kind of don't like, but I understand why it's there because it's a hatch and that's how the boot is designed of it or the trunk really. But this can be uncomfortable, especially if someone, you know, you have two adults sitting in the back, they want to talk to each other. They kind of want to slant. This is not going to be comfortable. So this is plastic and it's on both sides. I don't like that. You've got your speaker there. So like tweeters, it's a six speaker sound system. You've got four in the front and then two in the back or two in the front, two here and then two in the back all together. The six, no power, no air in the back. It's a small car. You should be fine with the air you get from the front, but this car has no USB-Cs. This car has no USB-As in the back. Actually, not even in the front when it comes to USB-Cs. There's only one USB-A, no wireless charging. So you might need a dongle or something if you have a passenger or two traveling with you. There has been some cost cutting, you could see, and the reason that's been that they've tried to keep it at a very minimal cost when it comes to giving you a brand new one with still nice things to look at and you feel good about it and it's still fun for a six speed manual. You will not look at the horsepower, 158 is nothing. If you really care for a Civic for a horsepower, your SI would be the best option and then Type R with stickers in at around $43,000. As I jump around, it's still solid. Not bad, minus a few things here. Like this is just, I just can't stop thinking about it. Let's talk about the pricing. Stickers in at 26,350. Then you have the destination handling for about 1,095 and then it comes at 27,445. These are some of the standard options. Other than that, this car has nothing extra added onto it. 
This one is available for sale at McGrath Honda of St. Charles here in Illinois. Come check these guys out. They're off of Main Street or also known as North Avenue. Solid car. I do really like what this car brings for the price it's at, for the fun, and also for longevity. And if you're like in the market that you want a new car, a smaller one, and you don't want to go over like 30000 this could be a fun one for a stick shift, really. You can't go wrong. And it's quiet. This is not hybrid, so you have that option. It still is a CVT, six-speed manual transmission, but overall, it's a solid car. Let me know what you think of it, and let me also know if you drive one already or you have looked at it. What's my verdict on this car? Absolutely no verdict because if you want a stick shift, you'd go for uh, this particular one. But otherwise, if you're looking for a hatchback car, I feel like this one's still bigger than the Honda Fit, perhaps that used to be in the market. They no longer make fits, but this would probably be replacing that for everybody else that has had these uh, Honda Fit or the Nissan Versa Note or cars like that, or like Corolla IMs and things like that from back then generation. I'm naming the cars that I don't think no longer are manufactured anymore, but for a hatchback, that still gives you a plenty of uh, space for humans inside and then your cargo and still brings fun to you. You can opt for either the stick shift or you can opt for the automatic transmission on EX Touring sport and or lx because they all offer automatic but they also have the option of stick shift especially in the sport and the sport touring there i hope this was helpful we're gonna close it off at the wheels because i truly love the wheels of the new civic anyways but thank you very much for watching i'll catch you folks at a different video take care